You're listening to a podcast from the Finnish Football Show. So I'm Mark Wiltshire and we've got a full squad today. So I'm joined by Keke Nulari. Hi Keke. Terve. By Mark Hayton. Hi Mark. Boy. And by Rich Nelson. Hi Rich. Hey. And not only do we have a full team, but we've got a full agenda to bring you, to update you with, uh, with everything across the, the world of Finnish football. We're going to look at what's been going on recently in the Bakehouse Liga. We look forward to the upcoming Nations League games for the Finnish national team, the men's national team. We'll discuss the intriguing story of the, the Finn that's in the Champions League final. We'll do a, another little update on the Suomen Cup and discuss Finns overseas and what's been happening for some of those Finnish players playing overseas. But as I said, we've got a full agenda, so let's get on with it. The referee's blowing his whistle to start to start the, the pain, I think. We're going to start with the Bakehouse Liga. Um, it's not been kind to me, so can we start somewhere else? We start with the happy news, Rich, and, and tell everyone about your boys, Coops from Corpio, sitting pretty at the top of the table. Yeah, Coops, um, at, at the time of recording on Tuesday evening, Coops have just wrapped up a, a 3 nil win away to Olu. Um, they've now gone 29 league games unbeaten, which is equals the Finnish record, which is held by Ops from 1980 to 81. So it's uh, almost as old as me. And yeah, they've um, back to the top of the table. Um, they're level on points with Hoiko. Hoiko played a game more, uh, seven wins and one draw. So unfortunately they dropped, yeah, dropped points a couple of weeks ago. But um, yeah, doing really well. Tim Varanen got his sixth goal of the season Today, so I continue to eat my hat based on what we discussed last year. You should be saving up for a new hat for this season. I know I'll be on a second course. I'll get one of those ten-gallon ones. But um, yeah, it's it's um, it's looking good. Um, again, a, a good win tonight, and they're playing uh, Helsing in EFC at the weekend. So uh, a chance to to take the record there. Oh, think, uh, you're you're, you're yeah. that confident, are you? You think that Coops sitting at the top can easily beat? Oh, yeah, of course. Well, 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 avoid defeat at least, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's um, and Hoiko are keeping it interesting. Um, tonight they came from behind. Um, they were playing Lati again for the second time in I think, six days. And uh, yeah, they went behind, went 2 1 ahead. Lati equalised to make it Desmond. And uh, and yeah, they got a late own goal to, to seal the three points. Uh, Perpa Hetamai got his first goal back in Finland, he got the second. For Hoiko and um, yeah, it's interesting watching them at the moment. I mean, they've got 13 goals in nine games, three of which came tonight, and they are definitely desperately missing the Risky Brothers, who've been out for at least three weeks now, I believe, if, if not more. And uh, luckily, their, their recent signing, um, Radulovic, has been weighing in with a few goals here and there. But they're, um, I don't know, if they, if they start firing, they'll, they'll do quite well, but um. There's definitely a, a lot of scrutiny and pressure on them this year. I think uh, after the the changes they've made, they've brought in a lot of experience, but it's not really transferring into to goals or attacking threats. So the top two are already starting to pull away a little bit. There's now a nine-point gap between second and third after well, Honka have got seven, play seven. But uh, yeah, nine-point gap already. Yeah, I, I was uh, I was intrigued to see the the scores while we're, I was watching the um, Haka Asikor game and the scores popping up on the screen and saw that uh, former Asikor old boy Demu Penningangas had scored for Lafty quite late as well, like 80, 84th minute. And then uh, after the game, I went through the results and saw that that Hoyiko had, had scraped the win with a spawny own goal on the 89th. So, it, but it, it wasn't the uh, that wasn't the latest action of tonight, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, we can laugh. I'm going to put my scarf on now, just for this section. 
There we go. Look at this. I think a great beauty, this one. Um, yeah, it's not it's not pretty at the Oma Asper Stadion this, this so far this season. I, I think we talked last time after we'd played maybe four games or five games even, and it had started off quite brightly. We'd played we played well to win against Hoy F Corps. And then we played well and just lost against Hoyiko, and I was feeling quite positive. And then we discussed last time going into um, a run of, of three defeats, um, and that run kind of continued after the last show and was only ended with a, a one-nil away victory in Vaza last week. We had a bit of fun on the bus. It's, it's quite a nice at Sainiyoki to Vaza. It's only an hour away. You don't have to get too uh, too trolled on the uh, on the bus <laughs> on the way there. A couple of couple of cans there, and another one on the way home, and a, a couple at the stadium. Um, and the, and the, yeah, okay, the win is good, but the performances are just not there. It's not exciting. It's not dynamic. There's not there's not enough of anything there. And then tonight we're playing Haka away, and. And, and like letting an equaliser in the 90 plus three minutes with a with a, a goal that is avoidable. If someone just puts a tackle in and it goes crashing in off the crossbar, literally the last kick of the game. And it, uh, it just knocks the stuffing out of you, really. It is. It's really strange what's happening at SGCO. I mean, um, you know, we, we spoke quite at length about about our mate Gomez going going back to SU Corps from after after he'd done some some really great work at Helsinki EFK. I mean, we can see what sort of condition they're in now that now that he's left. I mean, they they got a um, I think they got a two two draw, which uh, they're still winless, but they got they got a two two draw last time out, so they they're picking up a couple of points. But um, but yeah, I mean, he was doing great things down there in Helsinki, and we thought it would be it would be you know a, a a, a lovely return to him to SG Core, uh, you know, and it just it just doesn't seem to be working out at the moment. No, I mean, and, I'm sure he's I, working very hard, but I've, I'm talk, I've talked to a few people, and uh, I, I met met someone at, through work um, a week or so ago. Petri, if you're listening, Petri, you, you were the one who's given me the most common sense answer so far. But but basically, we've lost personnel, the personnel that were doing specific jobs last year. And they've not been replaced this year. The the game uh, th that weekend, the, the the defeat against Lati, I think we were playing with a back five, but only one of those played in the back five from last year. And we had these two defensive wing backs that could really get forward in Murillo and Arciero on either side. And we had three defenders playing centre back. And in some of the, the recent games, we've had... Uh, Daniel Hawkins playing on the left, who's an attacking, he's he's more of a winger than a than a defensive wing back. And you've got Serge Atakai on the other side doing the same thing. And the defense included in one game Mehmet Hetemai and and um Matej Rudetsky. And it's almost like the foundations are not there. Um and also last year in midfield, we we could perm two from any four of Rudetsky. So we've lost him from the midfield options. Um, but Noah Laine, Jude Arthur, Puru Hanola. And it could be any of them. We played Hoyiko at home early last season with Noah Laine and Jude Arthur there. And I was thinking, wow, that's bold. And they really managed it. Um, and then, and so that's that's gone. And the players that have come in are not bad players, but somehow the system isn't quite clicking. And it's also, I was watching it again tonight, it's really slow. And I think if anyone that watched the Ashley Core game, we got a penalty through one of the few pacey pieces of pieces of play. Hanola slipped the ball through, Hawkins ran on and was was brought down. Stone Stone Cold penalty, no no argument. Um, so there's there's several things not right, and and there's plenty of people come into the club this year in the sort of management side of things. I'm sure they can see it. I'm sure they know where it's not working. It, they, they don't. They don't need me necessarily or Petteri <laughs> to point it out to them. But it's just not really 
improving. Uh, the, the one person I would give a lot of credit for, Daniel Hawkins, is so far improved this season. You know, he's been gradually getting more and more game time in the in the first team, but he's always been fairly peripheral. But I've noticed that when he's been away with the Finland under-21s, he's been getting some goals and playing regular games. And he's like, like old-fashioned dribbling with the ball. It's really exciting. If you saw the goal that he got at Vaza, he was running at pace. And then he got into a little bit of sort of a, 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 a face, face-to-face with the defenders in the box. And he just kept a really cool head and danced through and just stroked the ball home. And that's quite exciting to see. But... We're not seeing enough of it, unfortunately. So what Joaquin usually likes to do is a good footballing coach. Like he usually likes to set up his teams to, to control the ball, to move it relatively quickly. And that's really good if uh, if you can put it to use and then nab a goal because because then you basically, the other team chases the game. The thing that I look at when I look at Asiko is, and, and this might, this might, I might also take this back to how much uh, grief you gave Tuco last season. Uh, but but who's going to put the ball in the back of the net for you? Who's going to score the goals? Because because if you don't take your chances, that keeping possession becomes quite tiring. So yeah, in eight eight games, our our highest scorer so far is uh, Jose Pablo Monreal. He's played most most of the games up front there, um, and also there's there's Jake Jervis up there who was our top scorer last year, albeit with eight. He's been injured for a while. Um, so there's not really... Yeah, you're right, Mark. It's a, it's a good point. There's not really anyone up there doing... Creating a lot. There's, there's just not a lot of creativity. And you said the comment about the passing the ball around quickly, but that's not, that's not how it's been so far. Um, definitely trying to keep possession, but then when the, it, doesn't, it doesn't lead anywhere up front, and yeah, it's it's frustrating. It's a it's a frustrating time at the moment for sure. So you missed Tuko just a little bit. Personally, <laughs> not not so much. Monreal's played eight actually, eight of the the nine games that we played. So it's, it's he's been there, but not not getting the opportunities and not taking them. And there's been a couple of couple of games where we've made good chances and and across the team. They've been missed. We could have we could have had more against Hoyefko and Hoyiko, to be honest. So, yeah, again, so so the ball's not getting forward. It's not that there's not that creative spark unless it's Hawkins running at people. Um, Hanola seems not to have the outlet to do the things with the ball that he was able to do last year, playing triangles with Olinik and, and Marillo down the left hand side, and as soon as. Well, it looked like two of them were leaving. I, I said we've missed them, and we're definitely missing that that triangle down the down the side there. I mean, yeah, it's you know, there's seven points after eight games. It's not fantastic reading, is it? But uh, you know, there's oh, the, the the teams the teams around and about here are, are, are on the same sort of number of points. I mean, Hoy F Core stuck down the bottom on on their three points from their three draws, but I, I don't. I, I don't quite think they're... I think Mixel's work is starting to reap rewards now with the two draws that they've had recently. And I don't think they're quite at risk of getting cut off there down the bottom. So it's um, it's, it's going to be it's going to be interesting as the as the season progresses, certainly. Yeah, but, but you say about the teams around us, but after everything that happened last year with changing the manager because the team wasn't where it needed to be, <laughs> we are not supposed to be around the teams that are in 12th and 10th position. We're supposed to be nuzzling up to Coops and Hoyuk or somewhere closer to the top. <laughs> that relegation playoff should be very good game. It's nice to get an extra game at the uh, yeah, new stadium. It could be a repeat of next week's Sormen Cup game as Asiko mm. Academy against Asiko if things go oh. this way. Can yes. we can we change can we change the subject? Has anyone got anything to say about any of the other teams, please? Let me take my scarf off now. I think yeah, Keke is right about Hoyevko, though. I think there's there's some. I mean, there's the only team in the league without one yet, so they're not doing particularly well. But I think there is there are a couple of signs that they're that they're improving. The last time out, they drew with Turku and Inter. They're a tough team. So exactly, that's, yeah, that's, that's that's a brilliant point to pick up. 
it, well, I mean, it, it's made especially more brilliant by Sergei Yeremenko's oh, oh, fantastic yeah. red card. Yeah. Take totally him worth it. Team, like the absolute guilt edged, complete intentional handball. And well, what a game. I mean, you had Aero's diving header after only a couple of minutes. And then, uh, yeah, and then Aromenko giving it the old. And then today, I don't know if you've seen the footage from the, um, at Dorka, they have a goalkeeper camera um, above the goal looking down and they've shown um, at one point Beto has cut, caught the ball, run out and done Petteri Forsell and right in the six yard box and then run off. So I think um, if that gets raised to the appropriate authorities, I mean, he'll probably won't get anything unless he waved the flare or a pyro in someone's face. That's the only way to get a fine these days. But um, it was very, very much a free game, violent conduct ban. But uh, yeah, he'll still get man of the match because I think he's contractually obliged to do so. But, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and he'll be busy watching the Europa League finals tomorrow and claim a medal for it. But it's um, yeah, it, um, th- there's there's a lot of interesting stuff. Obviously, Mix who's gone there, and um, you see some of the training sessions and because, uh, like many clubs in Finland, the the working language is English. So when you listen in and hear Mix who's speaking his very distinct Finnish Scottish dialect, it's a it's a Wonderful thing. Mind you, they're, they're, Hoy, of course, it don't get any easier. As you said earlier, Rich, their next game up is um, is is Cups. So Cups are coming to town. So, um, yeah, don't know, uh, don't know what we get out of there. But, I mean, there seems to be a vague house league game coming along every day of the week like, lately. Mm. I mean, um, there's not one tomorrow. But, yeah, there's another fixture on another fixture on Thursday. What we got? We got, um, yeah, VPS uh, uh, hosting in Totorico. And um, yeah, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, there's, there's Vakehouse League of seven days a week if you want it. Almost, yeah, almost that way, isn't it? One one thing that's worth just just mentioning, Rich, you said earlier that that I think that Coops and Hoyiko are sort of pulling away already, and Honka a third with a couple of games in hand. If they win those, they would they would sort of pull up just behind those top two. But then from interim fourth with ten points. All the way down to Asikor in eleventh with seven points. It's nothing, nothing between the rest of those teams at the moment. They all seem to be quite capable of, of losing a good few games between them. Um, so you know, it doesn't doesn't take much. If if Asikor managed to hold on to that win today, we'd be seventh, and we'd be you know looking looking. <laughs> Or we're looking up at the moment, but you know what I mean. <laughs> we be looking up what from a high position. <laughs> yeah, it's it's still a, it's still early doors. I think. I mean, Asiko would be relatively all right. I tell you one thing that's interesting for the rest of the league is I thought Olu would would struggle this year, and when I look at them, I think that I mean, when the, when I look at the way they play, I reckon they're going to be easily easily safe. I don't think they'll be anywhere near the relegation. They've got this Argentinian kid up front, Michael Lopez. Yeah. I think he's got three or four. He looks hot. He looks like he looks like he knows what to do with the ball. So uh, I think that I would have usually sort of scratched out that oh, that first relegation place for Olu, but um I think I think they'll be I think they'll be yeah they'll be all right. We'll see if they keep Mossa or not. Yeah. There's some yeah. there's some rumors flying about there, isn't there, Rich? Yeah, we, I mean, he, he got sent off last week and I still haven't seen it, what happened. I think it was an off-the-ball jobby. Um, but yeah, he, he'd been out of the team for three or four games after having a big flare-up with a coach. Comes back in his first game, he gets a straight red. So that'll be a nice band for him. It's not like him to get in trouble wherever he goes, is he? But, uh, yeah, he'll be back in. He was at a Hoy F Corps game, I think, while he was on his kind of... Uh, exile from Oldham. So, um, yeah. I mean, he was he was there last season, I think it was, or the year before. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So, who wonders? He he might rock up there at some point. I think makes you did makes you give him did makes you give him a look in back in the because he, he's... he I don't know if he played under Mixu, but he definitely had caps and and was yeah. around the squad that time. Yeah, because he had he had five or six games. Yeah. And I think he's got one goal. But I'm, actually, you know, I think it was I think it was under Canova, but. But uh, yeah. but anyway, I think yeah, he, he did the same at, at uh, when he was in Latvia at Spartax. He mm. got like he, he threw he got in the hump and he wanted to leave, and they were sort of they wanted him to stay and finish out the season. And so I think he got sent off twice in three games. Or something like that. Well, last <laughs> last year he got I think was it either a second yellow or something for giving the up yours at Asikor yeah. yeah. to an empty crowd. Yeah. Brilliant. 
um, which shows him really. Um, but yeah, he could start a fight in an empty room, but he's box office. He is. Sells tickets. I'll tell you what, though, but you mentioned it there, Mark, but um, FC, FC Honka sitting there in, in third spot. I mean, they would have, if you'd have offered them that at the start of the season, after how many? They played seven games to be sitting in third spot. I think that'd have, that'd have ripped your arm off. Do you know what I mean? It's um, they're, they're, So they're, they're sort of pulling up trees. They're doing all right, FC Honka there. Yeah, I mean, it, having seen the uh, Honka 5 Asi Core 1 game the other week, <laughs> I mean, it, they they weren't they weren't that much better, or we weren't that much worse, whichever way you want to look at it. They had six, they had seven shots, six on target, and five went in. One of those, in Kelowna. yeah, one of those days. Um, I mean, that, 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 that Florian Klebs looks a player, doesn't he? Yeah, and um, Agon Sadiku, he's just turned nineteen, and he's scored I think, three or four already. He's looking sort of as as a centre forward. He's, uh, he's looking good. I saw him playing the, the Liga Cup game against Hoikov before the start of the season. He looked pretty sharp and got a couple there. Um, but yeah, he's, he's done well. He's, he's in the sort of Finland youth uh, age group squads. And um, yeah, he's done well. He, he, he scored against Inter last week. Um, and again, I mean, you know, we've spoken before about whatever's happening there now that they've moved back to their their stadium in, in Espo, but um yeah the, the pitch in that game against Inter was it looked like a potato field. So um yeah interesting. It's a difficult time of the year, you know I mean yeah. we've had a long winter and it's yeah. been quite dry. <laughs> uh any anything else on Vegas Liga or should we pause there and uh, and move on to the next um, topic? One thing I just mentioned obviously we got international coming up um that there are going to be i mean they've they've tried to that there's going to be a huge gap in the fixtures um to accommodate that but you're still going to have those who are on international breaks um so like logan rogerson of haka has been called up to new zealand squad for example uh, so you do have players going off playing potentially two three four games in that window uh, which will then be for some clubs going into then the, the european qualifiers so there isn't really much of a respite for some of these players. And I think some of the squads, especially the, the fragile ones with one or two star players, or those who'll be going off. I mean, Haka's a, a good one because Rogerson's been doing really well for them. Um, it's going to be an interesting one to see how they balance that because especially when you factor in travel, I think the New Zealand are playing in, uh, they're playing, I think, Peru in Barcelona. Then they're playing Qatar, in Qatar. And then they're playing their World Cup playoff against Costa Rica. So they're doing a fair bit of travelling around that. And, you know, we, we've, we'll talk shortly about Finland having four games in 11 days. Let's, so let's, talk, let's talk about it now. We've gone into it quite mm. quite neatly. Um, you said about the, the break in the Vakos Liga season. So the last few games are on Sunday, the 29th of May. And yeah. then there's nothing for about three weeks until Saturday, the 18th of June. Because in that in that sort of two or three week period is the the first four rounds or four match days of the nations uh, league competition. Um, so this is where this sees Finland in Group Three with Bosnia Herzegovina uh, again, um, Romania and Montenegro. Uh, Finland have got four games between the fourth and the fourteenth of June. And then they've got two more fixtures between the 23rd and the 26th of September. Do we know yet when the Hukayat squad is announced? I think it's this week. I think it'll be on Thursday this right. week. Yeah. Next, next couple of days. It's, it's, it, could, it, we, it could have been today, but it's uh, pretty soon. I suggest then following... Well, don't follow me on social media, but these are three other chances would definitely be be spreading the word uh, at Escape to Saw Me, at FC Saw Me, and probably on on Twitter, that is. And then on Instagram, Keke's uh, Finnish Football Show um, is sure to be pirating someone's pictures and putting them up there in the uh, in the name of uh, information sharing. Um, I've um, I've put all the I put all the fixtures in the, the blog post for this as well. So you can see everything um mark have you got your ticket for the bosnia herzegovina game yet 
No, I haven't got it yet. They just, but they just released released the extra tickets now okay. in in the last one. So I, I need your where you're sitting so I can get a, I can get some point in. Yes. You, which you, which you sent me already. Well, uh, which I, I, did, I did you send, send you, but I can always <laughs> resend. It's okay. Cheers, yeah. mate. Um, I mean that that is some turnaround, isn't it? The four games in what is it? Ten days. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's it's Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. Um, so Saturday the 4th is at home to Bosnia Herzegovina. Me and Lady Satu got the bug last November at the France game and we, we wanted to make sure we got back there as soon as possible. So the Saturday works for us. Um, then it's uh, Tuesday the 7th at home to Montenegro. Yep. Saturday the 11th away to Romania and Tuesday the 14th away to Bosnia Herzegovina. So again, it also KK playing the same, the same opponents within, yeah. within 10 days will be interesting as well. Well, I'm I'm fully expecting to be sitting top of the top of the table with 12 points after that. Hey, <laughs> God, I mean, he's gone. He's gone in with the but, big the big shout straight away. But I don't. I mean, I don't think there's anybody in that group really that's that's that scary. Uh, you know, what I mean, I think Bosnia Herzegovina are still all over the place. You know, what I mean, in terms of their 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 national team, they've been sort of falling apart for a couple of years. I think Montenegro plucky young team you know but they've got i think they've got maybe one or two quality players uh that i could name and uh romania to say you know you know what you're going to get there i think they're, they're doing a lot better than they have done in recent years but but I, I don't think there's any great shakes in that in that team so we should be expected to do relatively well against them any any uh, obviously the squads haven't been announced yet um Apart from you know me and Satu going, um, so any any thoughts about who who might be in the squad, who should be in the squad? Any any sort of tidbits or I mean, gossip? Well, we're we're going to get on to uh, how how Finns are doing abroad in a little while, but but yeah, there's I mean the hooky up players are, are doing all right all across their leagues. I mean one one guy I will just mention we um we had a bit of a chat about him when. Uh, when I was away in Spain for the friendlies, but Nikolai Alho seems to have found a, a nice little home for himself at Volos FC and getting game time over there. So um, yeah, he, and obviously he uh, he was in 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 the squad for those friendlies. So yeah, he, he he's got a chance of making it, I think. But um, but yeah, I don't know about any sort of brand new faces. I mean, there's been as we've said re- over the, the last half a year or so, there's been a lot of new faces coming in and while the Finland team is a transitional team it's it hasn't been weakened it's it's continued to play well and just j- slowly bring in those players I guess what we will notice now is at the end of the of the last sort of competitive campaign at the end of last year we lost uh, Paulus Arayuri, uh, Jona Toivio the the older, uh, more experienced defenders retired. So we've now we've now, but we've started building a defence, and they're not kids that are coming in either. They are experienced players in their own right. So yeah, I think um, what one thing that is a shame that we touch on is that uh, Ansi Suhonen, who has been very good for for Hamburg this year, and, and I think was looking likely to get called up to the the squad. For the Nations League, he's uh, very much the linchpin of the under-21 team. He broke his leg in training for Hamburg last week, so he's going to be out for for a few months. And um, I think that under-21, we talked about it before, they're producing a lot of players in that kind of attacking midfield position um, where that kind of that conveyor belt goes. Because I think you've got you've got the two young lads in Denmark, Ant Man and and Walter. It yeah. sounds a bit like a a crime fighting superhero duo. <laughs> Um, they're, they're doing quite well, and you've got um, you know Scuta in in uh, is he to lose? Isn't he? He went yeah. to yeah, yeah. Um, and and you've got a few players kind of there, but it's just again, Rive showed when he called up Ula Tolva for the uh, for those friendlies, you know, before he played a Vaghouse League game. He is looking at those players, and I think he realizes, especially for for this. I mean, you've got four games in 10, 11 days. That's there's going to be a lot of rotation there. You've got players coming off the back of a long season. Um, I mean, Tamo Puki, for example, and we'll, we'll talk about him later as well. Coming off a long season with with Norwich, going into the middle of June, still playing and, and still um, being very, very important. Because again, 
like the previous nation or the first nations league campaign this has a big ramification for qualifying for the next euros so again mm. 24 places up for grabs and uh obviously in in the case of euro 2020 finland didn't need that but having that insurance policy of a euro qualifier playoff makes this you know pretty pretty important time if they want to sort of go into that and i mean really you're looking if you come in the top two in that group at the end you're fairly likely to get a playoff place at best but it's um, there's a lot there i mean you've got a lot of players as well you've got to manage so players like paul jan palo who for the best will in the world he's doing really well in the top score in turkey is still injury prone and cannot play for 90 minutes in two weeks so there's gonna be a lot of rotation and and i think a lot of players who who appeared in in those games in Spain in March we'll probably get a few more minutes this time around as well I think from the from the games last time out Ben Kalman got a bit of a chance to show himself he didn't really take his opportunity I thought I thought, I thought those games were anyway a bit of a waste of time in, in the in the south of Spain except to see the lovely Keke travel um but uh but I'd expect Ben Kalman to come back at the squad because I think he's looking he's also looking sort of sharp and a bit bigger and a bit stronger in the in uh, inter in the Vegas league and I think the other one is Miro Tenho he's not exactly young but he's 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 doing a really bang up job for Hoiko so I'd expect him to come in as well so I think I mean uh, we'll have I wonder how big the squad will actually end up being because we'll have to have we can't I don't think we can afford really to have like um you know, people in for half a squad and then flying back to America, for example. So that's going to be a bit of a, tr- a tricky part because we've got four, you know, four four fixtures to get through. So it's a good point, Mark. Are they? Are we able to name a larger squad to cope with those four games? I think I think the squad size is is fairly irrelevant. I think um, ultimately your match day squad will be your eleven. I think up to twenty three. But I think the actual training squad, the 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 squad that they can pick from, is. I don't think there's a limit on that. It's just what they can have on the bench on the day. Yeah. Um, so it's not like a, a, a tournament, for example. But I think, yeah, like, like Mark yeah, said, okay. you've got players who I think MLS, I doubt they'll be taking a break or certainly not that long a break. Mm-hmm. So you might have a case where mm-hmm. Lord or Taylor might get exempted. They might be allowed to travel for, say, two matches um, and then have to come back if, if we're lucky. So, again, that has to be managed and... And with the rest of it, and again, you know, this is really important building because of the way the international calendar is this year. Um, I think there's only the two games in September and then that's it until March next year when qualifying starts for Euro 2024. So there's not really a lot of, I mean, we don't get friendlies really anymore, do we? No. But um, this is, and this is pretty much it now until the qualifying starts. So um, he's going to have to learn an awful lot very quickly about his squad. Uh, I'm, I'm, Assuming that as these games come up, that Mark will be writing match previews and maybe match reports because he's good like that. And then maybe after each game, we uh, two or three of us can just jump on a call and have a quick a quick chat. Um, Definitely. If, we, if we're at the game, Mark, maybe we can even do a quick review at the game. Keep it, keep it live. Yeah, keep it live. Keep it noisy. That'd be annoying for people. <laughs> <laughs> right. Why don't we stop? There goes the referee's whistle. And let's have a let's have a little look in our shop. Is that an Ilves top or an Ilves 2 top? Being the Ilves 2, the far more successful of the two. It's an Ilves 2022. Ah, oh, well. Oh, it's a it in available for that was a score, wasn't six it? months. <laughs> Six months um, only remaining now, and then it will be consigned to the uh, the history books. Um, I, I guess as we've as we've said before, I'll just I'll just show a little bit through this. We've got some of the other styles that you can find here. For They're on offer regularly. They were on. They were quite cheap. I think they were down to twelve euros last weekend uh, for a top. We did, make, we did. We did. We did plug that slouchy, one. Slouchy, slouchy V-neck, and there's other. Other items as Bits well. Bits and bobs. So, yeah, Ooh, that's right. So we've case. got phone cases set up and tote bags or whatever. Everyone and, needs a tote bag. And and not only because of this classic Ilves, Ilves versus Ilves uh, Swarman <laughs> Cup game, which we'll talk about in a bit more detail just after the uh, adverts. Um, 
but also because we heard from one of our loyal listeners one of our loyal listeners recently here you can see jamie sporting that soon to be very collectible ilves shirt so thanks jamie for your for your support and i, I hope you and your friend there are happy to have your mug shot on the finnish football show video if you're not let me know is that, and is uh, that tampera where he is there <laughs> it, it, it looks, looks like a little it. bit sunnier. <laughs> um, but but that's yeah, that's great. Thanks thanks for everyone that's bought a t-shirt and uh, it's tpublic.com and then search for the Finnish football show on there. Mark, do we have a Sipuli this week? Yes, yes, we do. Last week we had the defensive, or last week, last show we had the defensive one, which was uh, I can't remember what it was now, but uh, it was fantastic. It was, it was the equivalent of man on, I think. Yeah. Oh yeah, Selka. Yeah, 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 Selka. So this one, the, the, we can do the attacking one. So um, Sena Belly is uh, is the phrase. Sena Belly is uh, technically it's a wall game, uh, but it's also translated in English terms as a one-two. That's where you. That's where you give and go. So uh, right. saying say, say a is a one-two that uh, uh, that you you know give and go. Nice. Very good. Thank you. We were we were very efficient there with our advertising break. Actually, we we did forget one. We weren't that efficient because we forgot the uh, the buy me a coffee. Rich, have a little uh, have a little word about that for us. Yeah, buy buy me a coffee, which we spend on beer. Um, yeah, it's a, a nice way that people can contribute to the extensive running costs for this operation. But uh, yeah, some very generous donations in the the, the previous weeks. So uh, I say the the previous sponsor who didn't want to be named. Thank you very much. And um, yeah, it's uh, it makes a big difference because uh, this ain't free. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's nice. It, I say, I mean, knowing that people are out there and and that, you know we, we do a lot around crossing that where there isn't really an English language thing that was about Finnish football. I think uh, one of the things that we've heard from previously is the lack of, for those who speak Swedish, for example, as a, uh, they, in, in many cases, I'm not saying, not generalizing, but uh, you know, having something in English for the, for, for a lot of people is preferable having something in Finnish. So yeah, thank, thank you for all the support. Much appreciated. And, and the referee's blowing his whistle. We're going to go, barreling into the second half and talk about the fin that's at the champions league final i, I think keke you brought this to my attention so do you want to just explain what on earth i'm banging on about yes mate yes so um yeah the champions league final uh the women's champions league final that's going to be held in in turin um it's, it's at the juventus stadium and the uh yeah the Finn who's going to be involved is the um, the whistler, the referee, the lady in the middle. So um, yeah, it's uh, it's um, Lina Letovara. So she's been she's been announced by the UEFA uh, UEFA referees committee that she's been appointed to uh, to take charge of the the women's Champions League final. So congratulations to her. It's um, you know it was, it was pretty widely celebrated throughout the sort of the Finnish the Finnish female football community and and rightly so. You know it's um, it's a, it's a, a great a great honour for her and uh, yeah I hope she uh, hope she has a um, a match to remember <laughs> not not to uh, yeah not for any sort of incidents but yeah just a nice smooth women's Champions League final and um, yeah good good luck to her it's uh, who's playing it's um, Barcelona and Leon yes Barcelona it's and Leon again Saturday, Saturday the twenty first of May at seven p.m. Central European time so that's eight o'clock in Finland and six o'clock in the UK. Um, and if you're wondering who Lina Letovara is, uh, it's her face on all the imagery and artwork for today's, for today's episode. So you'll see her just there. And uh, we, yeah. We actually talked about in the last episode because she's been, um, she's one of the referees for the women's Euros this summer. Um, yeah. So there's 12 European and one... Venezuelan, I think, referee at the um, at the tournament this summer. So, uh, yeah, it'll be a, a busy few weeks for her. It certainly will. Congratulations, Lena, on that appointment. Whether you're the, the player or the ref, the Champions League final is one of those uh, pinnacles, whatever you're, whatever you're at. 
Okay, let's talk about Sawman Cup. We've uh, alluded to this a couple of times. Rich is wearing his Ilves shirt uh, to celebrate that Ilves, <laughs> Ilves Kisat, the, the reserve team, beat Ilves uh, first team in the Sawman Cup. Um, Rich, tell us, tell us a little bit more about this. Um, yeah, so it was last year the rules changed in the Sorma Cup that forced clubs with a partnership uh, to play each other at pretty much the first available opportunity to prevent, I think the, the Finnish FA were petrified of having a final between Asiko and Asiko Academy. And so they changed the rules last year. And so now if a club either has two teams, so Ilves, Ilves 2, or if there's a, a training or a farm agreement, I think it's the term, where clubs share players and, and training facilities and stuff, um, they have to play each other in order to get one of them out of the way. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, um, in Finland, the the junior sides, the, the second teams, the academy sides, they play in the league system and they're not allowed to overtake their senior sides, which, as far as I'm aware, has never really been that much of an issue. Um Last week, and, and I think in the last round, there were six or seven ties between teams that had to play each other, which makes the draw a bit of a mockery. But um, Ilves, who play in the Vekhaus Liga, and Ilves 2, who play in the Kakonen, which is the uh, the third division, uh, sorry, uh, third tier, second division, uh, they played at the, um, it was at the Ratana Stadium, wasn't it? And yeah, yeah um, Ilves 2 took the lead in the first half. Uh, our friend Tuco scored to uh, equalise for Ilves. And in the 95th minute, um, one of the great own goals of Finnish football history, Omar Mali stepped up and scored, um, which put Ilves 2 through to the fifth round. Brilliant. And it, was a, it, was, it was like a back pass from the, from the right back position mm. and it sort of skipped past or under the goalkeeper's foot and it was yeah. trickling in and he, he, he ran, scrambled slid oh. and they both the ball and the goalkeeper ended up nestling in the back of the yeah ball, so, so um it's um it's an amusing thing because i shared the video of it and it's been uh been quite popular around the world unfortunately it's one of those things again that finnish football is really popular and, and when things go viral it's for things like this and not well, necessarily. It seems the... like you're responsible for it, having shared it. And so well, I think at the last check, it had about six hundred thousand views that video. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> Did it really? <laughs> um, yeah, it's gone in like Spanish and, and French press and stuff. But um, and then yeah, I mean, uh, someone pointed out that when I shared or when other people shared a video of uh, Ikaunikis uh, Yanis's goal for for Cups last week, fine free kick, and no one cared. You know, it was one of the yeah. great goals. Yeah. No one cares. You'll never say. Yeah. Yeah, um, and I'll tell, uh, you, yes. I'll tell you what, right? I know, um, I was just thinking from a fan's perspective, and I haven't actually asked them, but I know obviously Jamie, but I know a couple of other Ilves fans, like, like really well, you know, sort of like Neil on Poya, hardcore Ilves fans. And I'm just, I, I'm going to have to ask them, how, how do you feel? Like, are you allowed to be angry if your second team beats your first team, or, or can you just be happy that the second team's full of players who are, who are almost good enough. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? It's, um... it, it's funny. It's a funny situation because we, we like, like Rich said, there in the next round now, we've got the three, the three, or three of the teams. We, we've got the teams that are playing in Europe coming into the, into we... the Sawman Cup. <laughs> Were you about to say the three big teams? No, I wasn't going to say that. I wouldn't yes. dare say that. No, I was thinking two. there's only three, but there's only three fixtures that had to be fixed in this in yeah. this way. So, mm. um, Inter play Inter reserves, and Asiko play Asiko Academy, and Hoyiko play Hoyiko Club. Clubby. Yeah. Um, but one thing uh, that did come up was that Clubby got to the semi-finals in 2004, yeah. uh, which was two rounds further than Hoyiko got. They didn't play each other, but um, yeah. Clubby got, and they had, I think, in their team, uh, Hetamai was in the team, and I think a couple of others who went on to to fairly good things as well. So um, it's it's not unprecedented, but um, but yeah, it's certainly done the rounds. And of course, as well, the Ilves two being in the next round, um, Ilves players they can't then use ringers, Drop down, yeah, <laughs> because they've all, they're now cup tied. 
and yeah. because they're separate entities, um, you, you can't play for, for both. So uh, that rules that, that one out. So the, the kiss that will be heading away to AC Olu in the next round. Mm. That's a, another Bakehouse Liga team, for another notch on their belt. Um, but but what I was going to say is that, that Asiko Academy versus Asiko is next next Tuesday, I think. And I was thinking, oh, maybe Wednesday. I'll go and watch a game from the visitors corner. Section, I've never yeah. seen a game over there, and I wouldn't <laughs> be I wouldn't be deserting my club. I'd just be, you know, supporting slightly it's, different teams. It's an annual fixture now, isn't it? But um, one thing that did didn't really become much of a talking point was that um, Hoiko advertised their match as a derby. Now. <laughs> I don't know if that's a derby. If it's two teams no. from the same club, it's not. It can't be a derby, can it? No, they, they call it a clubby, it. clubby derby. Mm. Uh, no, 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 no. Down, the down marketing with this man's gone into mm. overdrive there, <laughs> really. Yeah, yeah, half and half scarves and everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we we're getting to the we're getting to the stage where the the fixture list just about fits on one page of your of your browser as well which is which is there's still a few left <laughs> manageable mm. there's still a few and there's still some interesting teams in there from the from the lower leagues let's, let's give yeah, a you've asked long comment that are, are still in there they're playing yeah. they're playing yaps of yarvin Par. so yeah that'll that'll be who got what what they got beat 10 nil or 10-1 the other day didn't they yeah um, yeah, by Nistan, yeah. Nistan. yeah um, so... And you've got Sexy Poxu, everyone's favourite. Um, they're yep. playing at Poyevko on... Oh, Hela Torstoy. Hela Torstoy, yeah. Um, that's one o'clock kickoff, which I didn't realise was a public holiday for most in Finland that yep. day. Mm. Uh, but, um, yeah, that should be good. I think tickets are on. So that's at the Bolt Arena. Uh, mm. That'll be fun for them. Yeah, there's some good-looking ties there. So, yeah, yeah there's, good there's, luck, to, there's good luck to all those little clubs. Lots of lower lower clubs down there actually. So that's all. Uh, that's that's interesting. We'll see where stuff. how that how that shakes out. If there's any more upsets in the in the next round, um, and let's talk. I think this one's going to take us a little bit of time because the 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 topics we could talk about is a big long list here, um, which is Finns overseas. What have the Finnish players playing in? in Europe and further afield, been up to recently. Um, Rich, you mentioned earlier Ansi Suhonen's broken leg, maybe keeping him out of the national team. Well, he will keep him out of the national team, but even keeping him out of, uh, of potential selection. Um, any any more to say on that? Or um, Well, no, he, um, I think Hamburger in the promotion playoff in the Bundesliga, um, I think, and yeah, he was doing really well. He's just signed a new contract with them, uh, very highly regarded. So, um, so it's, yeah, it's a shame. He's um, he's really come on in the last year. He's been a, he's been at Hamburg for years, uh, quite a long time now. But now he's 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 done really well. And it's a shame because um, again, I think in in Germany, um, he's yeah se- second division. But again, there's there's I think there's a few others at Hamburg as well. Is it the Kilo brothers are there as well? Um, but yeah, no, he's, he's he's done well, and he played in the the German Cup semi final uh, a couple of weeks back, and did did quite well there against Freiburg. So yeah, it's a shame he's um he's really come on, and I think potentially could could become a, a regular in the Finland squad. Those young bones mend quickly. He'll be back <laughs> yeah. for That's next it. season, fighting mm. fighting fit. Hopefully, um, the next... staying um, st- sorry, oh. it's just staying in Germany for a second. Obviously, um. Lukas Radetzky, he was named in the uh, he was named in the Bundesliga team of the season, so um, yeah, I mean, uh, kudos to him, our mate Luke. Mm-hmm. He's um, he's been doing great things. I mean, um, they're they're back in the back in the Champions League by Leverkusen, secured himself a Champions League spot. So that's uh, that's you know onwards and upwards for for them and for Luke. And um, yeah, just in Bundesliga two, I think it, it was won by Schalke 04, wasn't it, Rich? And um, yeah. Yeah, Malik Tior got himself a, a Bundesliga two championship medal. He's um we're still trying to get our claws into him, but um yeah, not sure yeah, yeah. How, that, how that's working out. But but yeah, you know, half finished, so we'll we'll, uh, <laughs> he'll, he'll we'll give him a little mention. <laughs> and it's good to see Schalke coming back up because they uh, they they're a, they've been a terrible team for many many years, but they are a very big club yeah. in Germany, as I as I understand it. So. Um, good to see that name back in the in the Bundesliga. Um, there's a big question next on my list, which is what next for Temu Pukki? Yes, well, 
what next indeed i mean we 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 ran a little poll on our uh, on our instagram over there and um and the question simply was should uh, should tamu stay at norwich and uh, obviously we know norwich are at the foot of the table they've been relegated for i don't know how many weeks already and they um, they continue to sort of get stuffed but um but yeah we had uh, we had uh, out of all the votes we had a 75% against 25% swing for no, he shouldn't get yourself out of there, Tamu. But, um, but yeah, I mean, he's, he's been scoring goals. I mean, Norwich have been God awful, but Teme still managed to, to score goals. He's found the net. I'm, I'm not quite sure how many he's got. But 11. He's double figures. 11. Isn't he? 11. Yeah, he's so 11. 11 Premier League goals for a relegated side. It's, it's not terrible, is it? But um, I, 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 mean, had, I read, um, heard somewhere that he's the first Norwich player to score 10 goals or more in sort of consecutive Premier League seasons, you know, seasons that they're mm. in the Premier League yeah. for decades, if not, if not, you know, even and he's, so, I, I think he's just surpassed that Norwich legend Grant Holt or something, there's some other, mm. some other record as well. So, I mean, I think, I think the Norwich fans will, will want to keep hold of him. I mean, uh, I don't know the ins and outs of his contract, but I'm sure he's getting paid handsomely it's just whether he feels that he wants to either stay in the Premier League if he's given that opportunity at another club or or if he just wants to you know st stay stay earning his dough and, and score another load of hat full of goals and really cement his legend status mm. you know getting him back getting him back up again there, from there the are championship worse, worse things than being a legend at a club like Norwich aren't they no that's it that's it but you know I don't know what what your boys opinions are but yeah our uh our followers over on Instagram, 75% of them are saying, boys, get out of there. I think he's got two years left on his contract, um, which is kind of the issue. I think, um, again, it's difficult to see a Premier League team picking him up as their first choice centre forward. Um, and the problem is, is he's obviously got a pedigree and he's scoring and he will score goals. And this is for a Norwich team who really haven't been built to service him. Um uh, and he'll probably go down to the championship and score 20, 25 goals again next season. Um, next year will be fun again, won't it? Well, that's the thing for, for him. And, and he's 32 now, I think. And we're at the point where, you know, in two years' time, he'll walk away from Norwich for free. He'll be 34. Um, really, you'd like to think he might have one more year at Norwich. But if it's going to be in the championship, then you're looking at if he's going to get a payday. And we've joked about a little bit going somewhere like Turkey or someone like that where we'll do well. We've seen Poy and Palo's done well, but um, I don't know. It's, it's a difficult one because, again, you know, that age, will he be appealing enough for someone bigger to come and take him along or does he want to stay there and score again and, and have a great season and Norwich will go to Finland and plant another 25 trees or whatever it is they do? We, I mean, we've we've seen what it's like for Finland when he's playing week in, week out and, and wrapping the goals in for Norwich. You know, I mean, he's always better in a Finland shirt when when Norwich have got like, a, you know, their usual the run. At, them, yeah, yeah mm. the usual run at the championship. So for me, I, I think at least for next year, keep him there. Yeah, I stay at Norwich. He's on 77, 78 goals, something like that. So another mm. season at the championship, he's going to knock 100. For Norwich, yeah. I think that's I think that's a that's a personal target he could probably hit. That would probably cement him as a club legend sort of forever. And I think that's not that's not nothing, you know, for 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 Demi, so. Um okay, okay. Yeah, just um just on uh hooky at forwards who are relegated teams, Rich just touched on in there, but yeah, Yo Poyampala, he's um playing for the for the relegated Rizespor in Turkey. And, How can uh, they also, be relegated? He's, he scores every time he looks at the ball. There you go. How as, bad as is their Rich, defense? As as Rich said already, you know he's he's sitting he's sitting bang top of the goal scoring table. I mean, um, he didn't even turn up there at the beginning of the season, did he? It was um, it, the season had started already, I think. And um, mm. and he's been he's been he's been sitting on the lot. Uh, seriously, we've been joking about it in the WhatsApp, but the last the last few games, he's come on as a sub, and literally sixty seconds later, the ball's in the back of the net. So um, yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, he's gone there. He's gone there on loan. He's still contracted to buy Leverkusen, but he's gone there and he's he's scored goals and he's going to collect a golden boot from the Turkish Super League. So I suppose from his point of view, unfortunately, his goals haven't been able to save Rizespor from the drop. But but from his point of view, he's done his job. 
there can't be another professional footballer that's that's been playing for as long as Yolle has with the goals to minutes ratio of, of that man. Like the, he's got to be the most efficient striker in the history of football. I think there was one spell when when he was at Leverkusen. I think during one of the rare times he got a run of games. I think he scored a hat trick in about yeah, six yeah. six minutes, yeah. and then in his next game he came on as a sub and scored twice. And I think he was yeah for that season, and then it worked out for most of the season because he had five goals in fifteen minutes. So that was like him in May, yeah. but. But, but I mean, that's the, how the he likely... started his career, isn't it? Well, yeah. Yeah. The listeners oh, don't know this, how he, how he started. Mm. Yeah, t- t- 10 years ago, uh, last month, I think it was, he scored a hat-trick against Mariham for, for Hoyko, and it was a perfect hat-trick in about three minutes. Yeah. And then he did it again against Mariham, I think was it probably the following season. Um, yeah, he scored a, a hat-trick against them. And, I mean, again, he's just one of these players that, unfortunately, injuries has, has done him, really. Um, but, yeah, he's always... He's always scoring when he gets a run because when he's been on loan at, at Hamburg and Dusseldorf and Union yeah. Berlin, you know, he's had more clubs than Tiger Woods. But he's um, he's always on loan and he'll go back to Leverkusen, who gave him a year's extension this year, and he'll probably get loaned out again. I can't see him really. I mean, in, if they're in we, the Champions League, maybe. But. That's what I'm saying. We we just touched on that that they've secured Champions League football again. Does that mean that they need a bigger squad that they could possibly possibly use him? I mean, like. I, I just don't know what the, what the fella's got to do to get to get a crack at a whip there. I mean, I mean, I, I think they could use him, but but uh, I mean, so yeah, if, if you've got a Champions League campaign, then obviously you're going to need a bit more in the backup. But he's 27 now, you know. What yeah. I mean, I think I think he shouldn't be going back to Leverkusen just to. I mean, even if I mean, if there's Champions League, which is which is a great shout, he's got 16 goals this season in 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 relegation fodder mm-hmm. in the Turkish mm-hmm. league. He could he should go. I mean. I don't, yeah, it's it's hard to put a sort of a level on it, but he should he should go somewhere where he can just get a run of games, you know what I mean? Where he can just get sort of the chances. He should go to Rangers, somewhere like Rangers, where they well, stick him I up was front. thinking Norwich. Yeah, yeah. Get the two of them playing together every week. Like you can't have all your eggs in one basket. You know? he, <laughs> he would. Or your canary eggs. Ser- seriously though, he would he would get another Bundesliga club, wouldn't he? Surely. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, I think you'd do a job in in the Bundesliga, probably somewhere sort of mid table ish. Bundesliga is a bit, you know, it's it's a bit sort of pedestrian. But I mean, it's a great, it's a really good league. It's a top league. I, I mean, I don't know. I've, I've got a thing for Scottish football. I think I think he <laughs> far more far more than than Bucky when he went there. Yolle is a player in a sense who's ideal for the Scottish leagues. You know, what I mean, he's he's quick in the box. His movement is good. He's physically stronger than he he looks, and he just likes to get on the end of stuff. He likes mixing it up. So, I don't know. He should, but but I I don't think he should stay on the bench and sort of wait for a, a Champs League space. I think he should move. Um, there you go, Keke. I've, I've there's a few uh, Instagram posts from you recently talking about some of the Finnish boys over in the USA. Yeah, yeah. So um, again. MLS, the boys have been doing well over there. Robin Lodd's been banging a few goals in. I mean, um, that's when when we I know it's I know they play different when they play international and all that, but that's that's one thing that I, I wish I'd see a little bit more of. I wish I'd see Robin Lodd hit the net a bit more regular for Finland. But um, but he, he he certainly does it. He certainly does it for for Minnesota United over there in in MLS. He's um, he's got I think he's got three or four goals already this season. Um, yeah, scored one at the weekend. They they did go on to lose, unfortunately. But yeah, he, he opened the scoring for them. Robert Taylor's doing doing really well, getting really really good minutes under his belt in into Miami there. Um, yeah, I don't think he's scored yet, but he's uh, he's he's playing out on the wing and, and providing assists and getting sort of 75, 80, 90 minute performances under his belt. So he's he's doing he's doing really well. That's in a lovely Lallinen. pink kit as well. Yeah, look, yeah, it's handsome, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's really, it's, it's gorgeous. He's um, and the, the black number they've got a, they've got a black change kit as well, which is quite nice. But um, I'll have to be tapping up Rob for for one of them <laughs> at the end of the season. I, I but, four, um, four of them. Yeah, four of them. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, Lassie Lassie Lapalainen, he's um, he's he's getting he's getting minutes for uh, Impact Montreal or whatever they're called now, Club de Football Montreal. So. Mm. Um, yeah, the, the the boys are over there. They're they're picking up minutes, and that's 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 what you want, isn't it? 
and talking about playing minutes, somebody that's that struggled to to get maybe some regular football and now has found himself in Brazil of all places. Yeah. Mm. Nico, Nico Hammerlinen. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, he's um, he, he was at QPR, and um, I think he's still QPR gave him quite a long contract, and uh, this is a loan move, if I'm right. But um, yeah, he had he had he wasn't short of chances. He he did he did get a few opportunities at QPR, but for whatever reason, it didn't quite didn't quite work out. But yeah, he secured this loan move um, to I'm going to butcher this Botafogo. Botafogo, yeah. Botafogo, yeah. Botafogo yeah. FC, yes. So uh, yeah, in the uh, in the Brazilian Premier Premier Division or whatever you call it. So um, yeah, it's uh, but yeah again, just nice to see him getting minutes, isn't it? Yeah, because he um, he I think at the start of the season, basically whoever the manager is just said no, not having him. Uh, he went on loan to it was either LA Galaxy or yeah, LAFC, Galaxy. yeah, Galaxy. And um, and yeah, and he's gone to Botafogo, and they've just been promoted into the the sort of top division now. And the way the Brazilian league works is really weird. You've still got state sort of regional championships and the national one, so they play a lot of games. So he, hopefully, I mean, they've got a huge squad, but hopefully, yeah, it'll, it'll do well and just give him that little bit of extra experience um, playing in Brazil in Rio. I mean, that, that was where Clarence Seidorf went there. I think after he left. Milan, I think he went there for a season. So uh, yeah, good, good pedigree. I ain't being funny, but if someone, if you're, if you're, if you're rocking up to bloody White City every week, and then someone <laughs> says you fancy Rio de Janeiro, you'd be a fool mm. not to, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> for the experience, if nothing else, yeah. For there sure. you go. For sure. But um, yeah, just, just another one I wanted to mention, which we can't, we can't skip over, as Mark was talking about the um, the Scottish League. Uh, our old friend Glenn Kamara. Sporting the, the number six Finland shirt here is in the Europa League final tomorrow night with Glasgow Rangers. Yeah, Frankfurt against Rangers in the Europa League final Wednesday the eighteenth. That's um, that's exciting. These European finals are all like right on the horizon now, aren't they? In the next sort of week or two, uh, and the first one's yeah. the Europa League final. And he he um, he scored a goal in the semi-finals as well. I mean, we know he don't score many goals. Stroked it home, beautiful, beautiful, Lovely. cracking goal. How, I mean, what, I was, what do you think? What do you think about the game tomorrow? Okay, okay. You, well, you follow I, Rangers a bit. I do. Yeah, I mean, uh, it was a, it was a it was a funny old moment for the semi finals. I mean, those of you who know me know that I, I had a season to get a West Ham United for many many years. So, you know, it could have been a West Ham Rangers final, but um, yeah, Aaron Aaron Cresswell saw saw that that wasn't going to happen. But um, but yeah, we, from a from a Rangers perspective. It's it's already an amazing achievement what what they've done, but um, yeah, Van Bronckhorst, the manager over there, seems to seems to have them have them, especially especially in Europe. He um, he seems to he seems to know what he's doing, and and they've they've been they've been really good. And I wouldn't bet against them. I mean, we all know the qualities of Eintracht Frankfurt. They're they're a good they're a good side, but in in many ways they're they're a club similar to Rangers. You know, they've had their trials and tribulations they've got a massive 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 following as have rangers and um and yeah i mean i just hope that we get to see get to see glenn in in the final i, I was i was trying to think back the last the last men's national team finland player to play in a a major european final and i think it must have been hoopier for for liverpool when well, they played in the uh, uefa think... cup UEFA Cup tw- yeah. 2001, wasn't it? But um, he played in 2005. But I think um, yeah. Passan and ah, played for Werder Bremen, and it was around that time, mid 2000s. I think he played for Werder Bremen. Um, but, but it's yeah. been a while. But, yeah, I mean, this and, is, and this is got why. Weird... This is why I I need you guys here. How do you know that? How do you remember this stuff? Uh, I can't remember. And, I actually remember, remember right for breakfast this morning. He had a fantastic career, Petri Passer. Yeah. He's a and legend. He's one, of, one of the big TV pundits now, isn't he? No, I'm not. I'm not arguing with that. I, I was. I'm aware. I'm aware of him, but mm. I wouldn't know who he played for almost twenty years ago. That's but, why um, you employ us, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> it is, and and you earn every penny I pay you as well. Um, well, Glenn's also got a big <laughs> carrot because the UEFA Super Cup final will be played at the Olympia oh, Stadion oh, oh. in August, which will be between the winners yeah. of the Champions League and the Europa League. So. Yeah. If Rangers win that, then they'll be playing the winners of Liverpool and Real Madrid in Helsinki in August. 
which will be and, fun. Yeah, uh, surely it should be a round robin with the winners of the Europa Conference in there as well. A three, a three way. <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, that'll be next. Yeah. We, we, yeah, all so we all know first. why they made that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, fans of Finnish football and Glen Kamara, get uh, get on that tomorrow. It should be should be a good game. Can also give a shout out to um, veteran Finland goalkeeper Nicky Mayenpa. Yes, uh, one of the, one of the rare ten point zero scores on who scored for his performance for Venezia, who unfortunately been relegated. Um, his he played in goal for Venezia away to Roma on Saturday night in Rome and I think he made the most saves that have ever been recorded it's in one act. game. 40, 46, 16, I think, was it? 16 saves and I think the way it all worked out was just he had one of those games where I want to say nothing went in because he did concede a goal but it was um, yeah 16 saves, uh, four clearances 65 touches, so he touched the ball more than any other Venezia player. Um, we, yeah, and we have to then mention his uh, his goalkeeping teammate over in uh, over in Italy, uh, Jesse Jesse Jorinen. Keke. Yeah, uh, Jesse Jorinen, Brescia there in the Serie B playoff. So um, yeah, Jesse has got another uh, a chance to be playing in in, in Serie A next season. Um, yeah, they. Uh, he, he's had he's had something like fourteen clean sheets this season. Yes, mm. sir, so As as Brescia have uh, have made it into the Serie B, Serie A playoffs. So um, yeah, I think there's where's there one match to go. I think so. Um, so yeah, they, uh, they he's he's got a chance to feature in the top league in Italy after 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 these these games coming up. And another one, the final person on my list, and then we'll we'll wrap it up and we'll give, let the listeners take a break. Uh, Yasin Asunun winning the second division title in Holland. Yeah, he done well. Sorry, I didn't know if somebody wanted to make a. Comment. Oh no, no, so, no, no. Well, you all ran out of steam as well. But, uh, well, um, <laughs> since he moved there from um, from Lafty last year, um, he's done he's done tremendously well. And I mean, I, I find it hilarious they're sponsored by a. Uh, uh, how can I put it politely for the listener? A company who provide pleasure products for consenting adults. Um, <laughs> the, the Dutch hand like shall we say? Yeah. <laughs> I think the, the sort of people who buy West Ham. But um, no, he's done really well. And um, yeah, they Essen have been promoted to the um, the Eredivisie now. So uh, yeah, it's good good chance for him. I think again that that pedigree of. Of Finnish players in Holland, it's nice to get another one because I think the last one who went there with some fanfare was Saka Ulatupa, which, which didn't work out for a variety of reasons. But um, I mean, he's doing well in, in Sweden now. But yep. um, but yeah, it's nice to see him sort of getting up, and he had a, a good run of form and scored a few goals as well. Yeah, I mean, walked walked the league and he played almost every game. Mm. Like he, he was he was a feat. Like he was wasn't just a bit part, but an actual feature of the of mm. the team. Okay. Yeah, I know we've been um, we've been focusing on the uh, on the on the men, but um, just one last Finn abroad. Just want to give a big shout out to uh, Tuya Hurunen, who secured a fifth, yes, a fifth uh, Serie A uh, female title with with Juventus this weekend. So um, congratulations her to her. Fifth. Yes, yeah. fifth in a row, isn't it? Yep, a fifth consecutive. Yeah. How about if in the next episode we go a little bit deeper into the the, the female Finnish players overseas and, and have Sounds a similar good. run through of who's who's won what? Yeah, do a nice build up for the uh, the women's Euro starting. Yeah, exactly. It's fifty days today at the time of recording. It is. So, yeah. yeah. Very good. There's the referee's whistle. We're at that full time. Um, does, if nobody else has a following, then I could suggest someone this week. Go on. I think nobody else has a, follow, has a following. Um, we mentioned him earlier in the in the show. It's uh, Demu Peningangas, um, who I'm who is playing for Lafty, former Asiko boy, and we we connected on Instagram, and for some reason, known only to him, he followed me back. 
uh, and bothers to to like some of the the nonsense that I post on there. But I, his his Instagram uh, page is uh, is a combination of action shots from matches, um, videos of him training, um, and then pictures of him looking very suave and dapper in all kinds of outfits. And they're they're the, the most interesting ones. I just look at them and think. That would look like a sack of potatoes on me, but he somehow manages to uh, to pull it off. So if you want if... a mix of of match day training and fashion tips, then it's Benizione on uh, on Instagram. Uh, but we'll put the link in the in the show if there. You, and, if you uh, like woolly jumpers and dogs, he's your man. Well, it's a bit like that, yeah, yeah, exactly. But it's, so it's, it's worth. He's scored a couple of goals recently as well. Cracking. Yeah, exactly. So um... just um, just before we go, I just want to also mention, um, and you can choose to sorry to, to to steal your funner, but you can choose to uh, to follow him as well if you want to. But a big shout out to um, to Patrick Reitanen, who um, he's he's come out and uh, and started speaking about the, the struggles that he's had with with mental health and um, and sort of you know anxiety and depression issues while he's been trying to forge his, his young career as a footballer. I mean, Patrick's got so much potential. He's been at some of the some of the biggest clubs. Um, he's currently at EFK Mariaham, but he's had he's had his injury setbacks in his in his career, and he he opened up. He put a massive long post on on social media about um, about you know mental the importance of of managing and understanding your mental health in sport. So so yeah, kudos to Patrick for for being brave enough to talk about that. And um, yeah, we wish him, wish him all the very best for the future. Rich? Well, on that topic, Phil, if I, I think it came up a couple of episodes ago that um, Ronnie Paperman, who was at Hoyekor a couple of years ago, uh, he moved abroad. He essentially finished playing professional football for, for very much the same reasons. Um, and he's back now at uh, Atletico Malmi, which who, who played the Coleman in. But uh, Again, I think it shows a lot more openness around these issues and the guys that the young players have, you know, especially those who go abroad at a young age and, and you know, clubs still, uh, other than the giant ones. I mean, we're talking right and he went to Liverpool at yeah. 15 or 16. I think he left Yaz to go there. Um, you know, th- th- there's a lot of pressure on these guys and, and the fact that they, they're able to come back and talk about it. And, you know, yes they're playing at a lower level but hopefully they're doing it out of fun and not obligation or anything like that and they can just enjoy their football because there's a lot of pretend I mean Paperman was a fantastic prospect for Hoyko a couple of years ago so it's nice to see him playing again I think that you, you Keke you just invented a new section of the show called Extra Time <laughs> well, thanks thanks for that it happened organically but we'll, we'll we'll stick with that so now that Extra Time is over I think that just about wraps up this episode. Thanks to my co-hosts, as ever, for joining me. Mark, goodbye. Cheers. Head up. Rich, goodbye. Hey, hey. And Keke, goodbye. Kidos, nakemin. And listener, thank you for listening. And until the next episode of the show, goodbye. You've been listening to the Finnish Football Show. You can find us online at finnishfootballshow.com. Remember to subscribe to the show wherever you're listening or watching. You can follow the Finnish Football Show page and group on Facebook and on Instagram. See the links in the episode description below. You can also connect with the four hosts on Twitter. At Explore Finland, at FC Sormi, at Escape to Sormi, at Kekke Mulan. Links to the Finnish Football Show merch stores are also in the episode description.